There's the presidential candidate. Now, I got to give you some straight talk. Fine. With a, a message. The message. 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 That's defined. We've dealt with her before. Defended and disseminated daily by an army of about 400 at the McCain headquarters in Arlington, Virginia. I appreciate your kind invitation. This campaign is led by not one, but two generals. The first, an operative skilled in tactics and mechanics, honed as campaign manager for Arnold Schwarzenegger. I work to run the day-to-day -day operations of the, of the campaign and involved in the strategy, talking to Senator McCain. I'll call you back. Thanks. Bye. It's Sergeant Schmidt. Help directing uh, the activities here you know, at the campaign headquarters and out across the nation to help deliver the senator's message. I believe I can inspire a generation of Americans to serve a cause greater than their self-interest. Good, uh, excellent. The campaign's day, other commanding officer. I'm the campaign manager for the McCain for President campaign. Is a longtime ally. He's fought many political battles alongside McCain, including his presidential run in 2000. Why do you think you've lasted so long? I don't know. I just, I keep showing up. Uh, you know, nobody tells me to leave, so at 7 o'clock in the morning I'm here and uh, trying to do what I can to help the campaign. Is it a problem to not have a single person who is in charge of the entire operation? You know, if you, if you dial it back a couple of weeks, I was doing all of it. I went to McCain and said, look, I need help. This is an area that we call our war room. The war room People and its lieutenants are on defense. He talks about foreign policy in Iraq. He's charged with monitoring the nonstop media coverage yeah, with plenty of sugar and caffeine. Flowing Red Bull. At the ready. We've got three shifts. Uh, the morning shift starts at 6. Uh, they go till mid-afternoon, then we uh, switch over and we've got a night crew that comes in. Fox got it, CNN got it. The communications team plays offense making sure the candidate's message is relayed and repeated. There are fundamental facts about this that can't be argued. We're not going to get into that, yeah. You don't want this to be a live debate. In this modern media age, the points and counterpoints come fast and furious through every conceivable outlet. If you think you need to have your taxes raised, I'm not your candidate, Senator Obama is. The campaign also tries to reach out to all kinds of voting blocks, including women, Hispanics, and African Americans. The efforts are coordinated by Aaron Manego. You are an African American man supporting John McCain, obviously. Do your friends give you a hard time at all? No, absolutely. Uh, most of my friends, they, they like John McCain. Um, in any other election year, they would probably be right here working with us. Senator John McCain! A regiment of advanced personnel choreographs every detail of every trip and appearance. Okay. We basically track the senator around the country. If you see that board over there, the jet is where the senator is. Oh, this little jet? That's where he is. Today he landed in, in Michigan. We're going to do a quick OTR stop, a quick off-the-record stop by a little hot dog place. Hey, how are you? Did you decide the hot dog stand today? I, well, no, the guy on the ground said, send a photo, and he was like, this is the perfect place. Another challenge for the advance team, orchestrating the events that McCain has made his trademark. This is what the leadership is all about. Town hall meetings. I want to make sure we call them, make sure they're going to the press conference. The communications team back at headquarters and traveling with the candidate constantly looks for ways to refine and strengthen his message. I think we need to take the transcript of what he said at the top and take a look at that and incorporate some of those examples. Yeah, I think so. I also like the idea, um, as much as we can, of getting the real people examples. I met a guy that owns two trucks, and he said he thought he could stay in business if he didn't have to pay 25 cents a gallon tax extra on diesel fuel. But the mother of all appearances will be in Thank Minneapolis you. in September, when Thank McCain you. accepts his party's nomination. And the pressure is on Mark Salter. He's co-written five books with the senator, and on this day, he's heading to Maine to work on perhaps the biggest speech of his life. Ed, do you have any ideas? Uh, no, not a one, to be honest with you. Come on. <laughs> no, yes, no. you do. No, I, uh, you know, I, we <laughs> haven't had a meeting yet about it, so I don't, I don't, I don't want to be presumptuous. But, you know, uh, I, I think, you know, any good acceptance speech gives you a, a real good sense of the guy who's asking to be president of the United States. At this point, you can write in his voice pretty well. I can. I can. Very hard to get his voice out of my head after 20 <laughs> years.
but they want his voice to be heard. The campaign complains it's not being covered enough, and when it is, there's too much focus on staff shakeups and potential conflicts of interest. How many lobbyists work here? And we don't make it a litmus test for employment at the McCain campaign. It goes without saying that some people who are involved in the lobbying profession do it because they are interested in that side of the equation. They're interested in government, they're interested in Congress, they're interested in public service. So lobbyists equal public servants? No, I didn't say that. How do you distinguish someone who you know, lobbies on behalf of cancer from someone who lobbies on behalf of an oil interest. I wouldn't call them the same thing, but they're still lobbyists. Good morning, Senator McCain. Good morning. Campaigns, warts and all, are watched and dissected more than ever before. And the McCain team is doing its best to adapt to this increasingly complicated battlefield of modern political warfare. Campaigns used to be mysteries. Nobody ever saw the inside of a campaign. And, Usually a bunch of old guys like me sitting around with cigars, you know, dreaming up things to do. And now it's like we're all on all the time. 